yesterday evening. Not everybody that's here was here yesterday evening, so just a few messages from yesterday evening, particularly about our venue, Gita Nagri. I was speaking of Gita Nagri being a magical place, and the topic this morning <coughs> is the, the magic of the holy name taking shelter, saying yes to the holy name. Certainly, we're going to have lots of chanting of the holy name while here in Gita Nagri. So, the, the subject matter is going to be from a writing by Sanatana Goswami, Rihat Bhagavatamrita. Those of you that are new, yesterday we mentioned Jiva Goswami on the altar on the lower ledge on the far right. There's a photograph of six dear associates of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. One of them mentioned yesterday was Jiva Goswami. And his uncle and the senior most age-wise amongst the six Goswamis was Sanatana Goswami. I mentioned that Jiva Goswami wrote three commentaries on Srimad Bhagavatam and Sanatan Goswami wrote one very amazing commentary on Srimad Bhagavatam called Brihat Bhagavatamrita. Brihat means great and Amrita means nectar. Bhagavat Amrita, Brihat Bhagavat Amrita. And the section that I want to focus on from Brihat Bhagavatam, which is the name, taking shelter of the name, saying yes deeply and more deeply and maximum. That's the, um, there's a part two, there's a description of that, where the, the, the main character Gopal Kumar is um, taking shelter of the holy name. He's saying yes to Krishna through the holy name. It's very interesting, very instructive. So this song is also, this is a song by Bhakti Midam Thakur. And I don't know if you noticed, some of you may know a little bit about it. Raga, this is a morning raga, very similar to the, the same notes as our Mangalarti song, morning. When the sun rises, um, part of my fascination and appreciation for this song is when going to Mayapur, there were two songs, one, this is one of the two songs that was sung after Mangalarti and Guru Puja or T Tulsi Puja or sometimes instead of Jai Radha Madhava, it was very, it's, it's a Bengali song appropriate for the morning with the rising of the sun. And with the rising of the sun, what do you do? You say yes to the holy name. Of course, you can say yes all day long. I'll read the translation. The, 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 Main emphasis goes to the last part, but as you, as you hear, uh, this is Bhakti Vinod Thakur in his own beautiful, poetic way, describing, say yes to the gift of Lord Chaitanya, that is, the pure holy name. Not just chanting, but pure holy name. When a tinge of red on the eastern horizon Heralded the sunrise, the jewel of the twice born, Lord Gorasundar, immediately awakened, taking his devotees with him. He went all over the countryside, visiting the towns and villages of Nadia. The Madangas resounded, Tatai, Tatai, the cymbals chimed in time, and Lord Garanga's foot bells jingled. 
as his golden form trembled slightly in ecstatic love of God. Lord Chaitanya called out to the town folks, towns folk, you spend your nights uselessly sleeping and your days decorating your bodies. Now just fill your mouths with the vibration of the holy names. Mukunda, Madhava, Yadava, Hari, chanting without offense. You've achieved this rare human body. Don't you care for this gift? If you do not worship the darling a Mother Yashoda now, then great sorrow awaits you at the time of your death. Each time the sun rises and sets, a day passes and is lost. Then why do you remain idle and refuse to serve the Lord of the heart? Understand this essential fact. Life is temporary and full of all kinds of misery, so take shelter of the holy name as your only business. Desiring to bless all souls, the sweet name of Krishna has descended to the material world and now shines like the sun in the sky of the heart, destroying the darkness of ignorance. Final line. Drink the pure nectar of the holy name of Krishna and thus satisfy the soul of Bhakti Vinod. There is nothing but the holy name within all the 14 worlds. Of course, there's lots of other things in the, all of the 14 worlds, but nothing of substance. It's all comes and goes, stays for some time, looks appealing, we try to be the enjoyer of that something and it goes. So that something that exists is that which is sat or substantial. The holy name. Take shelter of the holy name. Say yes to the holy name. That's our discussion this morning. So Brihat Bhagavatamrita has two parts. <clears throat> Part one is also very fascinating. The, the, the storyline is Narada Muni visits many, many, many places in search for the greatest recipient of Krishna's mercy. And rather than review, because there isn't time to review, many places, and very enthusiastically he goes from one place to the next place, seeing what he sees, he declares, you are the greatest recipient of the mercy of the Lord. And the humble, pure devotee of the Lord says, no, no, no. Here's my disqualification. I'm not the greatest. But if you want to know who is the greatest, so-and-so, oh, they're the greatest recipient of the mercy of the Lord. Go quickly, find that person, take their association. So Narada zooms off and visits that place and he sees, just as was described, because it's like, again, this is the person, then he sees the person, he sees the qualifications of the person and he bursts out enthusiastically, you're the greatest recipient of the mercy of the Lord. And the person, humble Vaishnava says, no, no, no. You don't understand. Here's my disqualification. But if you want to find the greatest recipient, there's this other Vaishnava. Go quickly and take their association. So he keeps doing this. And Sanatana Goswami at the end, because Sanatana Goswami not only wrote, he wrote the commentary, so we would properly understand it. Very similar to Vyasadeva compiling the Vedas and he wrote the commentary to explain the Vedas. They're all pure devotees. They're all pure devotees. 
And in the category of pure devotees, there is perfect, more perfect, most perfect. And the most perfect conclusion at the end of part one is the residents of Vrindavan. And amongst the residents of Vrindavan, the gopis are the greatest recipients of the mercy of the Lord. And Krishna declares this in the assembly of his queens, 16,108, actually it's 107, because Satyabhama is playing hard to get. <laughs> so Krishna chastises sin. Bring that Satrajiti here, and she has to hear this too. So they all hear the particular feeling that Krishna has for the residents of Vrindavan in general and the gopis in particular and why. They're the greatest recipient of the mercy of the Lord and that ends part one. And part two begins with Sanatana Goswami saying that was just a warm up <laughs> so that we can do the real Brihad Bhagavatam to part two which is in two parts very extensive and the storyline, it's more detailed, but the storyline is <clears throat> a cowherd boy from Vrindavan is appropriately named. His name is Kumar, because Kumar means a certain age, young, five, six years old. Kumar. And he's a cowherd boy, so his name is Gopa. There's Gopis and there's Gopas. It was a coward boy, <coughs> Gopa Kumar. That's his name, Gopa Kumar. Again, there's details, but for simplicity's sake, <coughs> Gopa Kumar is narrating his autobiography to a Brahmana who is lamenting that he's not able to achieve the goal of life what to do. You know that one. Not able to achieve the goal of life, what to do. So Gopal Kumar says, normally one shouldn't speak about oneself. But because of the confidential exchange that we have and because I can't think of a better way to explain, I'll give you my life story so that you can understand how to achieve the goal of life. Some time ago, I, Gopal Kumar, along with my friends, we were performing the occupation of Vrindavan. We lived in Vrindavan, and we were taking care of the cows. Five, six-year-old boy. And in the course of taking care of the cows, in a distance, I noticed one very attractive, spiritually attractive, elder personality, the sadhu, and I just somehow became attracted to that sadhu and so I would take some time and go and take the association of that sadhu and hear from that sadhu and gradually over a period of time I became attached to that sadhu and then eventually I requested the sadhu, can you give me the name Diksha? Mantra, Diksha. And the Brahmin was very affectionate in general and particularly affectionate to this young Gopal Kumar who he appreciated the qualities of Gopal Kumar very much. And so he agreed. He said, you go take your bath in the Jamuna. When you come back in that purified state, I'll give you Mantra. And so the mantra was given. And in the course of giving the mantra, that's all he did, just uttering the mantra, he swooned in ecstatic love for Krishna and stood up and half delirious staggered away and that was it. He just vanished. Gopal Kumar <clears throat> later says, he didn't give me any instruction. 
He didn't say, should I chant it aloud or silently? Should I chant at certain times of the day? Should I chant it continuously? What is its meaning? He didn't, he just swooned in ecstatic love and walked away and disappeared. But the Brahmana told him, very important, the Brahmana told him, chant with great faith that this name will bestow upon you all desirable things. So that, that mantra was the Gopal mantra. It's referred to again and again. And for those of you that are interested, what's that? You'll find it in Sri Brahma Samhita. It's the same mantra, one of the mantras, that was given to Lord Brahma, identified as the Gopal mantra. Now the Gopal mantra is sometimes called the Madan Gopal mantra because the, the deity of the Gopal mantra is Gopal or Madan Gopal. And Madan Gopal is another name of Madan Mohan, who was the worshipable deity of Sanatan Goswami, of course. So Sanatan Goswami is describing, you might say, himself or at least one who has deep affinity for finding, being in the association with and lovingly serve Madan Gopal or Madan Mohan. It's, it's quite beautiful. So Gopal Kumar continued his childhood activity, a boy activity of taking care of the cows and chanting his mantra. And chanting his mantra, his, in his heart awakened this strong desire to see and be in the association with and serve in a very warm and personal way Madan Gopal. But he couldn't find Madan Gopal. He couldn't find Madan Gopal just like the six Goswamis, searching for Krishna in a mood of separation from Krishna. Some of you know the song. Hey Rad, hey Brajadei, BK, Chaladite, hey Nanda. So, searching for Madan Gopal, his heart was in turmoil. So he went to search for Madan Gopal. Many things happened in chapter one. One of them is he visited a, a king who had a <laughs> deity and he worshiped the deity very beautifully, wonderfully, gorgeously. And he stayed there for some time. Then he heard about Lord Jagannath. So hearing about Lord Jagannath, chanting his mantra, he swiftly went to Jagannath Puri to see Lord Jagannath. And this comes as a refrain again and again. It has something to do with our Gaudiya tradition and the position of Lord Jagannath in our Gaudiya tradition, just like our Rathiyatras all over the world. The very first Rathiyatra in New York City Prabhupada attended and what he spoke about from the stage, it's recorded, he gave very esoteric description of what's the inner meaning of Jagannath Ratyatra, which has a lot to do with the, the, the position or place in the heart and in the lives of Gaudiya Vaishnavas for Lord Jagannath. It's, in short, it's Krishna on the occasion of the solar eclipse Krishna and the residents of Dwaraka went to Kurukshetra, as did the residents of Vrindavan go to Kurukshetra because that, that was the tradition. You go to Kurukshetra on the occasion of solar eclipse and there was a reunion. They hadn't seen Krishna for a long time. 
And when they saw him in this opulent feature, the Prince of Dwarka, they were happy to see him, but they didn't like to see him that way. And so they pleaded with him, come with us back to Vrindavan. Details and details. It's described in Chaitanya Charitamrita very beautifully. And so they, they wanted to put him on a cart, that's the Jagannath Rathiyatra cart, pull the cart with ropes, not with horses or elephants, and bring him to Vrindavan, which is the Gundicha temple where Jagannath leaves the temple and goes to the Gundicha temple in the mood of entering Vrindavan. And there he stays for some time and then returns back to the temple. It's a two-part Rathiyatra. Krishna also feels separation from the residents of Vrindavan. That was elaborately discussed in part one. So Krishna in Puri has great significance for Gaudiya Vaishnavas, followers of Lord Chaitanya. So he went to Puri and he saw Lord Jagannath and he could just for hours and hours chant his mantra seeing the deity of Lord Jagannath and be very happy. And so the happiness gradually moved to the position, well, at Marangopal. And his heart was hankering for mud and gopal, so he turned back to Vrindavan. And that's where chapter one ends. So I'm now going to summarize chapter two. We'll get to the, the sweet parts in a moment. It's all very fascinating. <clears throat> so he's in Vrindavan, searching for mud and gopal. His cowherd boyfriends don't seem to relate to him the same way because he's in this mud and gopal space. He's just hankering for mud and gopal. They're cordial, but it's not the same. And as he's hankering for mud and gopal, and hankering for mud and gopal, and hankering for mud and gopal, he wants to see the Lord of the universe. He decides, I'm going back to Puri. At least there I can see him uninterruptedly as Lord Jagannath. So he starts his journey back to Puri. And on the way, he comes to a place where there's many learned brahmanas. Remember, he's just a cowherd boy. He's not, he hasn't gone to school. He hasn't studied the Vedas. He hasn't. He's a simple boy. <clears throat> and he hears the brahmanas speaking about this place called Swargaloka, heaven, where these very exalted personalities worship in person, not just the deity form as he saw the king and saw in Puri, but the personal form of the Lord of the universe. And here's how they worship him this way, that way, and Gopal Kamar gets really interested to go and see the Lord face to face in person. So what does he do? He chants his mantra. And <clears throat> along with the mantra, there's the consciousness behind the mantra. That's, you know, you, us, each one of us. And each one of us has a intention when chanting the mantra, the Sanskrit that's used in this part two. Standard term is sankalpa. Sankalpa means intention. So with the sankalpa of seeing the Lord of the universe in the heavenly planets, he chants his mantra very strongly and sincerely. And guess what? A vimana descends, a, 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 a craft from the heavenly planets descends and takes him to Indraloka. And he's looking around, it, so the 
the opulence of Indravoka is described. He's not attracted to the opulence. He is attracted to the fact that the Lord of the universe, who has appeared as the younger brother of Indra, comes regularly every morning and receives directly the worship of Indra. The elder brother is worshiping the younger brother because the younger brother is the Lord of the universe. And it's a very intimate exchange, a very opulent exchange, a very affectionate exchange. He not only offers articles from a distance, he hands things to Vamana, who reach, extends his hand and receives them. And sometimes pats his younger brother or elder brother with his hand. Very, very personally. And <coughs> Gopal Kumar is awestruck. He hasn't learned anything about paying obeisances, but he just naturally pays obeisances because that's what you do when you're with somebody that's like that. And then this mood of love, he, he, I want to stay here. That's how he initially feels. And um, that the Lord has personal exchanges with Gopu Kumar. You've been searching for me. Here I am. Please stay here. Just be with me. Very warm, very personal exchanges. Then something happens. The something that happens is Indra makes another boo-boo. Indra does something with some other person's wife and he has to go off and do tapasya for that. So the demigods are now very concerned that, that the king of heaven is gone and there's turmoil in the heavenly regions, what to speak of all the rest of the universe. So Lord Vishnu, or Lord Vamana says, appoint Gopal Kumar to be the replacement Indra until he comes back. So Gopal Kumar serves as Indra for one celestial year. One celestial year is a long time. Prabhupada would often say one day and night is six months and six months of our time. So one celestial year is a long time. And while serving in that capacity of the post of Indra, he doesn't do what Indra does. He, he, he uh, goes on Sankirtan. <laughs> he's spreading bhakti throughout the whole universe because he's the king of the universe. He's no bhakti Gopu Kumar. And um, he rules in the heavenly kingdom. It specifically says, because of the happiness he receives by the exchanges with Vamana, he overlooks the fact that though there's dissension even in the heavenly planets and there's disturbances from the, the, the daichas, and, but he overlooks that because he's, he's so fixed on his wonderful exchanges with Lord Vamana the Lord of the universe. And again, details about the affectionate exchanges between them. Something Vamana does, something that Gopal Kumar does. He offers things, he reaches out his hand, he receives them, he takes some and he gives them the remnants. And Gopal Kumar is ecstatic with this exchange. <clears throat> Imagine with that deity form, something like that. So, he's excited. And he keeps chanting his mantra. And after some time, periods of time, there's always the, you know, but. But sometimes Lord Vamana just disappears. He doesn't know where he's gone. Maybe he's gone to Dhruva Loka or Satya Loka or Swayed to weep, or he just doesn't see him. And so he's not feeling in his heart satisfied, he's feeling restless. And 
more of those kinds of descriptions. Then Lord Bhamana comes back and there, everything's nice again and the, the wonderful exchanges. And then he isn't seen again for some time. So he's, I want to be, with, I, I think I'll go back to Jagannath Puri and see Lord Jagannath. He starts contemplating, I don't want to not see the Lord of the universe. Then this amazing thing happens where um, some sages come and all the demigods stop and they go and pay their obeisances and worship these great sages. So he asked the demigods, who are they? You're, you're worshipped by people all over the world and you're worshipping these people. Who are these people? Where are they from? And what's, who's, who's the Lord that they engaged in serving? So the demigods are a little jealous. But the Brahaspati being asked, that the, the, the priest of the demigods, he's Brahmana, so he's liberal, he explains. These are <coughs> prajapatis, they're progenitors of mankind, those that populate the universe with good praja. And they, their place of rest, so that's who they are. And their place of residence is Maharloka. Above this region, heaven, there's multiple other regions. The one directly above us is Maharloka. And that's where they're from. <clears throat> and the Lord that they worship is the Lord of sacrifice. And they just continuously engage in sacrifice and the Lord of sacrifice, you know what? He not just is the fire, he shows himself from the fire, extends his hands and receives everything that they offer. And as soon as the, the sacrifice is over, he disappears. And so they hurry up and do the next sacrifice so they <coughs> continuously see him. Gopu Kumar gets really curious and interested and he doesn't stop chanting his mantra. He takes shelter of his mantra because his guru said, this mantra will bestow upon you all desirable things. So he starts this desire to go to Maharloka, chanting his mantra with that sankalpa. Guess what? This vimana, this craft just descends and invites him to get on board and he goes to Maharloka chanting his mantra. And when he gets to Maharloka, he's amazed because these personalities, they're, the demigods were great, but these personalities are just, no one instructed him what to do, but he just, Paid his obeisances and little boy just fell at their feet and appreciating their greatness. And he watches what they're doing and same as he heard what happens, continuous yagyas and there comes Lord Vishnu extending his four hands, receiving everything that they offer. You know, when we're, when we're doing sat fire sacrifice, we say mantras and you pour ghee and offer grains and say swaha. So, that's, it's said that the fire is the tongue of Vishnu and his tongue is receiving the ghee and the grains through the agency of mantra. Swaha. So it wasn't just a fire, it was the Lord appeared from the fire. And he was also very affectionate and spoke to Gopal Kumar and offered things that he had received from the great sages to Gopal Kumar, you please take. I'm staying here. <laughs> After some time, the sages 
they developed some affection for Gopu Kumar. And they said, you know what? Why don't you receive Brahminical initiation? You're, a, you're born in a cowherd community, a, a Vaishya. Um, but if you like, we can give you initiation into Brahminical status and you can stay here and see the Lord of the Universe to your heart's content. You've been searching and searching for the Lord of the Universe. You see what we do. Just stay with us. So Gopal Kumar considers and, and, and his thoughts are, you know, I like being a Vaishya. And I like, if I, take, if I do what they're in, encouraging, then I'll just see the Lord of Sacrifice along with them. But if I don't, then I can worship them and the Lord of Sacrifice at the same time. So I think I'll just stay in that position. Plus, um, my guru that gave me my Gopal Mantra, I have yet to fulfill the purpose of this mantra. The purpose of the mantra is to be in the association of Madan Gopal and intimately serve him eternally in a very personal and direct way. I haven't, I haven't achieved that yet. And so it would not be, it would be ungrateful of me to not continue. I'm going to read now the verse in the purport. This is um, chapter 2, text 28 part two. For fear of being ungrateful, I never gave up my japa, nor for a moment was I able to forget this Brajabhumi. This Brajabhumi means he's speaking to this Brahmana in Brajabhumi. Commentary. This is Sanatana Goswami explaining. From Gopal Kumar's point of view, the life of tending cows in Vrindavan was far more attractive than any other circumstance, including residence in Nandana Vana. Nandana Vana is the, the, the forest or the garden place of the demigods. As long as he continued chanting his mantra, this attitude could not be covered by illusion because the natural gift of Sri Madan Gopal's mantra was to attract the heart to the Lord's sports in Vrindavan. Wanting to avoid being ungrateful, Gopal Kumar never stopped chanting. He might justify abandoning the mantra only after attaining his final goal. If he were to stop chanting before then, he would not discover the mantra's full benefits. Thus to stop the chanting prematurely would amount to ingratitude for without having bothered to receive all the mantra's benefits, how could he properly acknowledge them? Very beautiful, huh? How can we properly acknowledge a gift that we've been given if we don't have, if we don't have an understanding of the gift? The fullness of the gift. Golokera, Prema Dana, Harinama Sankirtan, this kirtan that we all engage in can kind of, we enjoy it and kind of take it for granted. And, you know, it's, it's rhythmical and musical and that feature makes kirtan a little easier than mantra chanting. I've heard that from some devotees. It's easier to stay fully attentive when in kirtan. We're going to have a fantastic kirtan tonight. Please come. But when chanting japa, it's much easier for the mind to wander because those social interactions and the musicality and the rhythm and the... It says three things. It's you, the name, and your mind. 
mind. Our dear friend mind. That is filled with longings and desires, especially passionate ones, fruitive ones, wanting to get something and enjoy that something we got. And what's fruitive about japa? So the inspiration goes down unless we have what we what is inspiring Gopal Kumar. So that's the that's the appeal. That's the, the message I wish to convey this morning. Gratitude. So this, this, this isn't something that I've read in scripture, it's something that I've learned, and I like to say it. Gratitude is the seed of love. Gratitude is the seed of love. Just like many of you are parents, and um, the life of parenting is a life of sacrifice. And the life of sacrifice from parents isn't um, begrudging. It's, it's parents love being parents. Mothers love being mothers. When I look and see what mothers do, it's like, yikes. <laughs> Without the detail. <laughs> but mothers love being mothers. They love cleaning up the nests. They love wiping bottoms. And they love, you know, when the child cries to feed the child because they know that's what the cry means. They're hungry and Mothers love being mothers. And even when their children grow up, they're still mothers. And the children are saying, well, you know, I'm grown up now. <laughs> I love you, mom. Let, let, let me be an adult, please. And they want to still be mothers. They have to just like change the channel of being mother in a different way. But To teach a child from the, the parents that are sacrificing, not just to say please and thank you, but to feel heavy. This is real parenting. To awaken feelings of gratitude. Not easy. Behavior is one thing. Feelings of gratitude is another thing. So here's on the spiritual plane, this little boy, five, six, he has feelings of gratitude for something he really doesn't understand. Later instructions are going to come from his guru. But he doesn't have all those instructions. We have lots of instructions. Too many instructions. <laughs> Our husbands are too many. Make it simple, well, give me a, an easy one. So here's one, right here. Experience the fullness of the gift of the holy name. Because otherwise, one would be guilty of ingratitude. Because without experiencing the fullness of the holy name, how can you be truly grateful of the gift? Now, the giver of the gift is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and in disciplic succession, others are serving Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to give the gift. But the gift, just like this song by Bhaktivinoda Thakur, the pure holy name, Shudhanam. Receive Shudhanam. So there's things we have to do to get to Shudhanam. And it's avoid offenses. But how are you going to avoid offenses? The mind's wicked, our dear friend. The mind is filled with so many distractions. And some are not nice. Some are nice. But they're all distractions. So how do we... It, a powerful, essential element is what we're hearing in Brihad Bhagavatam Rita. The sense of wishing in this relationship with his mantra-giving guru to experience the fullness of the gift that he has received. That is, the commitment to the guru and the commitment to the gift. So although he's, he's attracted over here, and he goes over here, and he's attracted over there, and he goes over there. This is actually from the heavenly regions. He never stopped chanting. And the purpose of the chanting, in one sense, is to directly experience being in the personal association 
a mud and gold pot. If you remember from yesterday, those of you that weren't with us, you'll hear it for the first time. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, this is Madhyalila chapter 22, text 102. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, one who takes shelter of the holy name, heart and soul, I accept them as my confidential associate. Krishna, like you know, these names, Mukunda, Madhava, Hari, Yadava, Krishna accepts, you take shelter, not just behavior, but you give your heart. You say yes from your heart, not just with your mouth, same as what Leela Smarna was saying yesterday. With, with your heart, you say yes to Krishna. You, so so it, it, there's stages, and there's stages of distraction. But keep saying yes from your heart, you'll get there. Gopal Kumar gets there. So that was in the heavenly planets. Now, Brikhu, Brikhu Muni, you've heard of the name Brikhu Muni. Brikhu Muni is one of the direct sons of Lord Rama. He is one of the Brajapadis. He lives in Maharloka. He's the spokesperson for that group. Although Marichi is the elder, Brikhu is the spokesperson. Brikhu is the spokesperson commentary of Sanatan says because he's, he's most elevated in bhakti amongst all of them. Because the Prajapatis, there's a mix. There, there's devotion and it's not Shuddha Bhakti. And Prigo is considered, it's, it's in Srimad Bhagavatam without details. He's very, very elevated. Amongst the sages, they consider him particularly elevated. So he's the spokesperson. So, Gopal Kumar being invited by Brinku, why don't you just become a Brahmana and stay here, and be with us and be with the Lord of the Universe like your heart is desiring. Gopal Kumar considers, for these brahmanas performing sacrifice is the only interest in life. If I were to become one of them, surely I would become lax in the chanting. I am duty bound to continue. My divine guru taught me to worship this mantra. And besides, I have already seen its good results. Commentary. The ten-syllable Gopal mantra had already proved, proven its efficacy by elevating Gopal Kumar to the position of a king on earth, Indra on Swargaloka, and a resident of Maharloka. It's a powerful mantra. So our primary mantra is Maha Mantra, and then after some time we receive Gayatri mantras, one of them being this Gopal mantra in disciplic succession. You can read it in a book and chant it. It won't have the same efficacy without having received it by having it uttered by Guru. Later, when Gopal Kumar makes it to Goloka Vrindavan, Krishna says, I was the guru that gave you your mantra. And it's, it's our part of our theology. Although the guru gives the mantra, it's Krishna, tattva, through guru tattva, Krishna comes in disciplic succession. Krishna and guru are to be seen not as identical one to one, but the guru is representative of Krishna and thus Krishna is acting through his representative. So he's spending time in Maharloka. And same thing happens as in each of the other places he goes to. He starts feeling a little restless. The Lord of the Universe that comes from the fire, he's, he's, it's so sweet and so wonderful and 
all those good things, but it's not Mud and Gopal. I want to go back to Vrindavan. <laughs> The residents of Maharloka, the little scene says that they um, they have to leave Maharloka at the end of one day of Brahma, during the night of Brahma. So one day of Brahma is 1,000 cycle of the four yugas on the lower planets, Earth, Bhuvar Loka, and Svarga Loka. After 1,000 yuga cycles, that's the end of Brahma's day, and during Brahma's night, there's a partial dissolution. And it's, it's, it's first is it, no rain, and then fire, because everything is dry, it ignites. And it gets so hot in Maharloka, they have to go up. So they go to Janaloka or Tapaloka. So he realizes there's, it's temporary. And then when the, that night is over, then everybody comes back and then they can see Vishnu again. But for that period, so he doesn't like that. And then this amazing thing happens. This little boy of about the same age as him turns out to be Sanat Kumar, clothed only by the four directions, in other words, naked little boy. He uh, just shows up and he's sitting in meditation and all the, these Prajapati sages, they stop their yagya and they go and pay obeisances to this little boy and start worshiping him, including the Lord of Sacrifice worships him because the Lord worships the brahmanas, Namo Brahmanya Devaya, like Krishna and Dwaraka worshipped Sudama. The Lord of the universe worshipped this little boy. Umar and Gopal is saying, who's he? And why are these exalted persons who are above the demigods, and the demigods are worshipping them, they're worshipping him. Who's he? And where does he come from? Same three questions. And who is the Lord that he worships? So, Bhrikhu is the one that responds, and he says, this is Sanat Kumar. He's elder to us. Not only he, he appeared from Lord Brahma before we appeared from Lord Brahma, so he's elder to us in that way. He's spiritually vastly superior. He's filled with knowledge, and he's filled with meditation upon the Supreme Personality of Godhead. We revere him, we hear from him, we respect him, we worship him. That's who he is, and that's his qualification. And he resides in Tapaloka. In Tapaloka, it's above where we are, Maharloka, Janaloka, Tapaloka. So, Gopu Kumar, starts developing a desire, go check it out. What's Tapaloka like? So what does he do? Chants his mantra. With the Sankalpa, that he would like to experience the Lord as the residents of Tapaloka experience the Lord. Now the commentary explains, Maharloka is where they're prajapatis, which means they're grahastas, they're not interested in material happiness of any kind, including male-female attraction. They do as a service for the Supreme Lord. However, in Tapaloka, it's celibates only. That's one of the rules. And in that condition, in Tapaloka, they have two main activities. The, the, the favorite activity is meditation. And in that meditation, they see uninterruptedly the Supreme Lord, not just meditating, hoping for something. They see the Supreme Lord. And so their meditation lasts for a long time. 
because they don't want to leave that darshan of the Supreme Lord in their meditation. And after a long time, then they take a meditation break and go have discourses on spiritual topics. Take a little prasad, take a little nap, and go back into meditation. Because they, that's, what, that's their thing, tapaloka. So he chants his mantra, he gets transported to tapaloka. And there's this fascinating discussion, long discussion, could be confusing discussion from the residents of Tapaloka to Gopal Kumar saying, why are you looking for Madan Gopal? The logic they give goes like this. Before you can see something, it has to exist in your mind. You can't see it otherwise. So that's what we do. We just see in our mind. The Lord of the Universe. So just stay here and be a meditator with us. It sounds like interesting. And he does and he can see the Supreme Lord in meditation. But he never stopped chanting his mantra. So here's the text, it's text 83. Nevertheless, I stayed there for some time, attracted by the display of great power, out of respect for my Guru's order, and because I had seen how effective my mantra was, I kept on chanting. Commentary. The atmosphere of Tapaloka weakened Gopal Kumar's resolve to see the Lord, but he still per per persevered in chanting his japa. His Guru had ordered him never stop chanting, and Gopal Kumar did not want to be ungrateful. by disobeying. Embedded within this narration are many wonderful instructions, and I'll just touch on them, that it's on the theme of say yes to Krishna, say yes to Krishna in the form of his holy name. Um, the, 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 the name of Krishna is Krishna, and Krishna is the source of everything, so within the name, everything. And everything could be something temporary. So persons chant with the hankering for something temporary, it happens. Please help me pass my exam. With the long, whole long list. I don't need to make the long list. But the, the, the power of the holy name, if one has this qualification of deeper qualification, there's a mix. He's not yet unmixed. He has these other curiosity items at least, and they're, they're Lord-centered. How do they worship the Lord, so, and so forth. So he's giving, he's, through the narration we're getting a tour of the cosmic manifestation and coming up is beyond the cosmic manifestation. The whole Vedic cosmology and the spiritual sky Gopal Kumar is taking us on a tour. And, but it, so, sankalpa, your intention when chanting is really important. Even if you're a mixed devotee, you're not yet a pure devotee, that higher, both hankering, hankering is, is, is one consideration. He wants mud and gopal, and he's not satisfied with anything other than mud and gopal. He also has this relationship with his guru where he wants to be grateful to his guru by experiencing the fullness of what that mantra, so the, the guru-disciple relationship is very significant in achieving all that say yes to Krishna in the form of his holy name is meant to achieve. If that relationship is weak, then going forward it will also be slow. If, if not, you know, negligible. So receiving mantra is important. Having faith in the mantra is important. Having gratitude towards the giver of the mantra is important. Gradually, he's becoming educated. We'll see, as you, you continue reading, 
he hears from Narada, he hears from Uddhava, he hears from great personalities, all kinds of things that he never heard because he never went to school, didn't have spiritual or material education. And as he hears, then the clarity comes and it just reinforces, it strengthens his determination to achieve the goal, or finally he achieves the goal. Now, in, for, in, in his case, his little boy, Kumara, five, six-year-old boy, form doesn't change. For us, our forms change. We get older and things start to happen. And whether it's in this lifetime or multiple lifetimes or whatever it takes, the determination should be to say yes to Krishna in the form of his name. And everything is there. Making reference, and I'll conclude with this because it's already 9.20. Um, we heard yesterday evening Jiva Goswami explaining there are two types of taking shelter, two categories of taking shelter. One is a declaration. Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, I am yours. I have no other shelter but you. And then the other is by power of discrimination, eliminating this, eliminating that, eliminating the other thing, leaving Krishna. So in one sense what Gopal Kumar is doing is that second one, he's eliminating other things. <clears throat> and there's principles that are operating and helping him make those wise choices. But it's, it's, it's bhakti. These are elements of bhakti that lead to shuddha bhakti, that lead to the shuddha nam stage of chanting. It's a very, um, the text is very deep and profound, the story is very interesting, and it's easy to get lost in the story, but it, it helps being attracted to the story to get the essences, so you read it again and again, and essences come out that you didn't understand before. It's, it's so beautifully written. Sanatana Goswami. So there it is. Say yes to Krishna in the form of his holy name with great faith. We may get distracted, we may take wrong turns and so forth. Stay with the holy name, with faith in gratitude, wishing to have the fullness of gratitude for those in our disciplic succession that have given the pure holy name. Let us strive for that. Any discussion? Way in the back, way in the back. The Guru Maharaj regarding Go Gokumar, like he had something, he had faith in something unknown, like he has not reached the Krishna Loka yet. And he has faith in his own feelings, like he was restless and he didn't like certain things and he liked certain things and he followed those inspirations. So I want to understand a little bit more on this, um, like for us, for me. The goal of um, achieving fullness of holy name is unknown and there's faith in the mantra and the spiritual master. But there has to be some element of um, knowing what the feelings or the inspirations, uh, whether they are rightly directed or they are, you know, taken. Got I got the question. Guru Sadhu Shastra. <clears throat> His situation is unique in that <clears throat> He doesn't have the Bhaktivedanta purports. <laughs> we do. And we have persons who we can approach who are accomplished in the Shastra. So that the ultimate is the Shastra and we have the means through the, the knowledge of disciplic succession given to us so 
simply and eloquently and elegantly in the Bhaktivedanta purports. That's, that's how we can verify those three checks and balances. That's an asset that we have that Gopa Kumar didn't. So we don't just have to, you know, get out our compass and see which way it points. We refer to Guru Sadhu Shastra. or faith in the holy name, I find it easy to kind of lose humility with, you know, with the confidence, you know, you get a little bit of confidence, but the humble mood kind of goes away. Yeah. I was wondering how to kind of differentiate the two. Well, what you just said is what Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur describes in Madhurya Kandambani. The, the, there's two phrases he uses. One of them is Taranga Rangani. Ranga means wave, like Rangana, the Lord of Svetadweep that resides on the ocean of milk. Ranga, Ni, is diminutive, small waves, Rangani. And Taranga Rangani means enjoying the small waves. So there's a little success, and we want to be the enjoyer. Surf's up, let's get out the surfboard. And enjoy. So it's, that's unsteadiness in bhakti. It's a symptom in his description of anishtata bhakti. So right on the mark. So what to do? We, we, what to do is, up, recognizing the tendency to the, be the enjoyer of a little success, we stay in that position of the humble mood, of shelter taking. We cultivate that. You say yes to the humble mood and say no to the, the enjoying mood. It doesn't mean the success stops, but the, the enjoyer of that success is the Lord who we're making the offering of our service to. And that if some happiness, if it happens at that stage, what's going to happen at the higher stages? Okay, you just get fall in the, in the river, not just get distracted. So it's a principle that at, you know, at, at, at the stage where you are or any one of us is, if there's little success, we, what do we do? We look at Krishna and say, you're very kind. I'm undeserving of this kindness. It's just your kindness. Let me stay in this humble mood. I was wrong last night about you know, the sequence. So it's exactly the mood of Sudama. So become familiar with that narration and adopt the mood of Sudama, whether it's this or that. The humble mood of service is the place to go. There's two more. Our schedule says to stop at 9.30. Hare Krishna Guru My question is for the Sankalpa. Uh, like uh, one of the things that I was uh, contemplating, like when you were saying that when we are chanting, it's me, uh, the holy name and the mind. And uh, when this, uh, like this Sankalpa of... Um, Achieving the gift of Lord Chaitanya in fullness, mm. I feel like um, that's a long-term sankalpa, yeah. and um, and then at the same time for the efficacy of this holy name or chanting to happen, I have to very clearly define the short term, like in the sense of incrementally, like uh, yes. what's the what's, so the clearer my goal is, the more epic, efficacy would be there in me taking steps in that direction. Yes. Yes. So if you can help me in like, uh, you know, bringing that down to like, you know, at my stage or in a daily japa. Well, sure. No problem. Prabhupada does it. In the purport of the last verse of chapter 3, canto 1, he uses the phrase rapt attention, R-A-P-T. 
rapt attention. And he says, to, so <clears throat> it's in relation to Srimad Bhagavatam, and the verse says, one can see Krishna in every page if one hears with rapt attention. So Prabhupada gives the, you know, in order to have rapt attention, you have to have this. In order to have this, you have to have that. In order to have that, you have to have that. Be pure in one's habits of eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. Then he says, well, somehow or other. So, so there's levels. And a little bit, for example, a little bit like the question that uh, Acharya Nishta asked yesterday evening. How do we make a balance between working with that which matches my capacity right now, the regulation that I can achieve, and striving a bit further? So that's, that's very individual, person to person. And as we discussed, it's, it's, it, even from time to time within an individual, it may need to be calibrated differently. So it's, part of it is self-honesty and capacity to be introspective. A big element of that is how well we hear Srimad Bhagavatam. And because Srimad Bhagavatam is the, has the power to illumine the heart. What's my capacity? What are my qualities? Spirit qualities, the positive. And what are the negatives? Through the hearing process, that can become more illumined. So it a lot has to do with how well, you know, from our present position, how well we can hear. And then guidance from others that are well-wishers and know us well, and we're open. We disclose our hearts and we take guidance. Again, you know, it's something similar to what you heard back here, Tulia's question. Don't just go by your inspirations. You go by Guru Sado and Shastra. We take it, it, it's, it's just open it up more broadly. Read Prabhupada's books very carefully and you'll understand. Read Prabhupada. It's there. And if the heart is open, it'll be very clear. And then guidance when you have some refined question, as you are very good at doing. You ask, you know, specific and subtle questions pertinent to your, your life. And again, there's, there's recalibration depending upon circumstances change. The outside changes, the inside changes, and we may need to recalibrate due to those circumstances inside and outside. Last question because of time. Good I spoke to him, I should have let out more time for questions, but it's a nice story. Guru Maharaj, as uh, you were mentioning about the duty boundedness to follow the instructions of uh, spiritual master, mm -hmm. I feel very uh, strong duty boundedness and office work or household duties even though they are temporary but it was striking for me that I don't have any of that feeling for the spiritual instructions. How do you How do you cultivate? And my other part is um, How do you move the fulcrum over to that side a little bit further? That's what your question is. And do we have to go through that 20, 25 years of material training that we have got? Well, no. <clears throat> the question you're asking is one of the themes that we had here in Gita Nagari some time ago, acceptance and progress. That was the theme. So your articulation is, this is where I'm at. That's the acceptance part. And then the progress part is uh, something similar to Shubra's question, that is, you know, the goal is really far away. So, what about where, from where I am? So, the acceptance, the goal is really far away. What's some doable step? Something similar to that little exercise we did in Naperville. So, uh, not, it, you know, 
there are lots of things not to do. The thing to do is, what's a, what, what's a progressive step or two that I can take and maintain, sustainably maintain, and move in the right direction? And a big part of it, like Gopal Kumar, is the connection with the, the persons who are guiding me in my Krishna consciousness, not just my determination. That's the mind. And we know what happens. We get, you know, nauseous. <laughs> Vomit over the side of the railing, you know. Uh, I've done this too many times. So we need something more than the mind. We need that descending mercy element. So that descending mercy element, we make the commitment to the, because the spiritual well-being is going to take care of the other things. Better than you can do. But that's a matter of faith. And so faith has to grow in a natural way. Like a garden doesn't happen because you want, you know, asparagus. <laughs> and tomatoes. I'll go put some seeds in the ground and you know, tap my foot saying, hurry up, will you? Take time. Oh, so perseverance over time. And that the perseverance element comes through the relationship. It's not just the mind. We know what happens to the mind. It's chanchala. Then it's, it's, it's strong and then it's not so strong. And then we were distracted even when it's you know, somewhere in between. So that, that descending mercy is really important. Really important. And then how do we connect with that descending mercy? We're getting some very nice instruction here. Gopal Kumara said, as a acharya for how to go the next step and keep going and sustain the next step, next step. Okay, Srila Prabhupada, Kim, Sarah.